Worship is one of the ways that he comforts us, he builds us up, we connect with him. And we have a, we have a prophetic worship series that we have uh, begun. It's a CD series, and I really think it will be helpful to you in this time of, of basically <laughs> battle and war. And uh, so I want to uh, recommend to you Firestorm Prophetic Worship, um, and this is Holy Fire. And there's another one called um, New Wine, and I think that they will really help you. You can get them on any of the music streaming things. You can get them on our, uh, uh, you can see links to them on our Facebook pages and so forth. But um, I want to talk to you about truth today. Um, the title of today's message is, Can You Handle the Truth? <laughs> so... Prayer uh, today and worship, as we just said, are, are such, a, such a, a way to stay in the presence of the Lord in the middle of this battle uh, of, of truth and, and deception. Um, the kingdom of God and truth must be at the forefront of our life every moment. The language, the air, the foundation, the generating power, truth has to be that in our lives today. We are in this world, but not of it. So how do we know? How do we, quote, handle or even find the truth? Now, we know John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the door. He is the threshold. He is the way. And we need to remember that in this encounter, this battle that's going on, truth is marching on, and the devil's world wants to destroy it, wants to take it, wants to deceive it, wants to smother it, wants to cover it up. We're in a battle, and it really is a battle for our lives. We're in the battle for our lives. There's a great encounter in the Bible over this issue. It was the battle over truth. And you all know this story, I'm sure. Um, but it's, it's in 1 Kings 18. And Elijah was the prophet of the Lord. Now the prophets in the Old Testament, they, uh, they did not have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The people didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So prophets at that time were, the, were known as the men of God. Uh, they were known as the one who, who people would come to for direction and so forth. And so Elijah was God's mouthpiece to speak the truth. <laughs> and so King Ahab and we've heard of Jezebel, all of us that know the Bible, we've heard of Jezebel. Jezebel and Ahab wanted to kill Elijah because Elijah was the mouthpiece of truth. Now, the, the land was in a famine, there was no rain, and, and Ahab and Jezebel were trying to find Elijah and, and, and trying to look for him and seek him out and all this kind of stuff to kill him. And the Lord tells Elijah to go to Ahab. Ah! <laughs> if you knew somebody wanted to kill you, what would you say if the Lord told you to go to them? I mean, you know, it's a big deal. So, <laughs> so this is a prophetic picture of today's battle. There was a great war between Jezebel and the prophet of the Lord and between Elijah and the prophets of Baal because the prophets of Baal were wanting to be in control and, and they wanted to be the ones prophesying and having the big, you know, come to me, I know everything and all this kind of stuff. So in 1 Kings 18, um, you know, Elijah's obedient. You know, a lot of times in the Bible the prophets, they don't want to do it. <laughs> 
I'm prophetic myself, and a lot of times I don't want to do it. I mean, look at what happens. <laughs> so he goes, and here are 450 prophets of Baal. Oh, Baal, hear us. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, an oratorio, a music thing about, about a, this, this whole scene's really interesting. But the 450 prophets of Baal were all saying one thing, and, and, um, and so Elijah's going to demonstrate now. Now, you know, you and I, we need to be demonstrating in this battle for truth. <laughs> we're the hand of the Lord extended, and we need to be, we need to be, so, so his life is threatened, and then now he's got 450 prophets trying to tell him he's wrong, so he sets up this deal, and, um, and he, he puts, he puts, this, he builds this altar and everything, and so he basically says to the prophets of Baal, you know, Call down fire. You know, if your God is really God, uh, fire will come out of heaven. And so all day and all night they cry, Baal, hear us. Come, Baal, Baal, oh, Baal. Um, and fire didn't come down. So Elijah builds this altar. He prepares the sacrifice. Then he pours water. He said, get more water. This is not enough. You know, water is not good for fire. <laughs> so he gets more water, more water. He pours water all over it. He makes it impossible for natural fire to come from anywhere. And then he says, let the God who answers by fire, let him be God. And so fire comes down from heaven and licks up the sacrifice, the, burns up the sacrifice, licks up all the water and destroys everything. The God of fire, the fire of God falls. So, you know, you go through this whole passage, that was ver verse 38, the fire of God falls. And in, in verse 40, the, they kill the prophets of Baal because they're prophets of doom, death, destruction, and control, and manipulation, and lies. <laughs> there, there's a scripture. I'm not sure I've, I've put it in this, in this teaching. I'll have to see. <laughs> I don't remember. But, but, the, but the, Lord, the Lord destroys liars. He does not lie. Lies. Because liars and lies are dwelling with the kingdom of darkness and with Satan. So, God's not through with Elijah. After all, the prophets are destroyed and everything. Jezebel and Ahab are now even more mad, and they want to kill him even greater. And But he gets a little distracted because he's got to prophesy rain in the midst of the famine. And so, you know, all of that story, he prophesies. He has his servant go look for the cloud and... Finally, he says, I see the servant, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Their whole sermon's written on this whole thing. But the point was that he was the prophet of truth. He prophesied the rain was coming, and there came a great sound of the abundance of rain. So truth brings the abundance of the rain of the presence of the Lord. And so there was great rain, but then Elijah's scared again. <laughs> and he runs. But let me ask you, who died? Did Elijah die? 450 prophets of Baal couldn't kill him. Jezebel couldn't kill him. Ahab couldn't kill him. Jezebel and Ahab were the ones that died. So it was a great war with many battles, with great power and provision in the midst of the prophet speaking forth the truth. So you and I, we have a choice daily. The world system the devil, bad, death, or the system of the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus the truth. There are ways of this world that hold us in its own pattern, that want to snare us and bring us in and cause us to think like the world, to act like the world, to believe the world, to believe what the world says. It's a battle for the mind. In Christ, my mind is stayed on Christ, or I choose to stay my mind on Christ rather than these schemes. Romans 8, 7 says, The mind of the flesh, with its carnal thoughts and purposes, its world's thoughts and purposes, it's hostile to God. For it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. So, the, the unregenerated, we call it, unrenewed mind. The Lord says, put on the mind of Christ. 
Begin to think with the thoughts of Christ. Take every thought that you have. Maybe the devil or the world puts thoughts in your mind. You take it captive to the obedience of Christ so that we can be transformed. Please listen to this. Just because you dream it, it doesn't mean it's God. Just because you think it doesn't mean it's truth. Just because you read it or hear it doesn't mean it's God. It doesn't mean it's truth. Just because you feel it doesn't mean it's God. It doesn't mean it's truth. The devil is a liar and the father of all lies. John 8, 45. All he can, 44, I'm sorry, John 8, 44. All he can do is lie. That's all he can do. Many people have had childhoods where they're told you'll never amount to anything. You'll never, you'll never be able to do this. You'll never be able to do that. And it gets in there and they believe it because that's not the word of the Lord. I'm going to believe, as they say in Christendom, the report of the Lord. I'm going to believe what the word of God says. Yes, here's the scripture I mentioned. Psalm 5 verses 5 and 6. You abhor all evildoers. He hates those who do evil. We're seeing evil done in our streets today. We're seeing evil done in the world today. We're seeing blatant evil. We're seeing destruction and harm being brought to people, to property. We're seeing injustice, in, in just, unjust persecution. Um, the, 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 the liar and the father of lies, the Lord hates. You will destroy, this is Psalm 5, you will destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors and rejects the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. Then Psalm 510, hold them guilty, God. Let them fall. Listen to this. Let them fall by their own designs and counsels. Cast them out because of the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. There is another scripture that says, let them fall. Let the devil fall into the pit that he has dug for you. So the plans of the enemy are death and destruction. But truth is going to take us into a whole different way. And you and I, we, you know, if we, if we are in, the, in the, the God of the world, he blinds the minds of the unbelieving so that they cannot see. And so we don't want that. Um, I, I saw a movie one time. This is really an interesting thing. It's a movie called Few Good Men. And it's a movie about, uh, really about, about truth and about uncovering truth even though you don't have any proof and it looks like it's something different. And in this movie, there was a man that was in charge of a whole troop, of an, a whole army section in a different country. It was the U.S. Army and it was, in a different, it was in a different country than the U.S. And he was in charge. And he was drunk with power. Let me tell you today, there are leaders who are drunk with power and they're making decisions according to the mind of the world, the, the mind of the devil, and not because of the truth. They're not handling the truth properly. And so this guy, he was so separated from, from uh, the rest of, of the United States that he got an idea of what the truth was. And so everything that he did was based on what he perceived to be the truth. And he, he did bad things, but he was doing them. He thought he was doing them because of truth, and he did great harm because of the way he handled it. And so finally, this lawyer was trying to prove that this general, this big deal guy, you know, that was supposed to have all this respect and honor, he was trying to prove that he was wrong. And so he got him on the stand, and he began to let his pride, this man, he began to stir up this man's pride until finally... Finally, the lawyer said, we want to know the truth. And this man screams out, you can't handle the truth. And then he revealed what he had done because he was prideful, he was deceived, and he thought he alone knew the truth. So I want to know, can we handle the truth? Romans 12 says that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice and not be conformed to the world, but be transformed 
and the Bible says progressively changed by the renewing of the mind. This man in this movie, his mind needed to be renewed, but he, he, he was convinced that he was right, and it was a lie, and it was deception. And so we renew our mind focusing on the Lord and upon the Lord's principles so that we can prove what the true will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So we have to have the ability to discern the truth. We need to have the ability to, to, to distinguish between what is a lie and what is the truth. Now in 2 Corinthians 12, 10, it's talking about the gifts of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit guides us into truth. And verse 10 says, he gives us the ability to discern and distinguish between the speech or the words or the utterances of true spirits and false spirits, between lies and truth. Jesus, the way maker, is the truth. And the truth is, there's always a way. So he's the threshold, the door into the truth, the door out of the world system into the into the kingdom of truth. And so as we stay our mind on him, as we rest on him, as we allow him to lead us, we go into the truth and we go into deeper and in, we go deeper into him because we are choosing day by day by day to be built up and grounded, rooted and grounded. The Bible says be rooted and grounded in the truth so that we can rightly handle that truth. We can rightly divide it. We'll get to that scripture in a second. But we set our mind, actually let's go to that scripture, 2 Timothy 2.15 says study, in other words learn, and be eager to do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, a workman, a, a student, who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handling, and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Now, 2 Timothy 2.15, you could, you could teach a whole sermon just on this one truth, one, one scripture, because we have to set our mind and keep focused habitually on the things that are in the kingdom of heaven. Colossians 3.2, set your mind. Not on the worldly things, not on the earthly things, not on the horrifying things that we're hearing, but on the things of the kingdom, the heavenly things, choosing the system of truth instead of the system of lies. So in the scripture in Timothy, it says be eager. You know, I want to be eager. I want to chase after the truth. I want to define the truth. I want, I'm a teacher, so I want to be clear about the truth. When I begin to speak, I want to speak the truth in, in clarity, in ways that make it clearly understood so that the spirit hearing it can take those words into themselves and let that truth transform. Truth transform. Truth sets free. Not free to do what you want to do. Not free to just be, uh, be, you know, free to destroy. That's not what freedom is. Freedom is that inner freedom that causes you to be loosed from the prison of lies, the prison of falsehood, the prison of fear, the prison of depression, all of those things that hold us, truth comes in, begins to work inside of us, and begins to set us free from all of those things. Truth is the truth and freedom. They don't mean that you can do anything you want to do. <laughs> they mean that you can choose. You can choose life. So Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, you know, whatever's true, think on it. Whatever's honorable, think on it. Honorable. Where is honor in today's world? What's worthy of respect? What's right? 
It's confirmed by God's word. What is pure and wholesome? What's lovely? What brings peace? What is admirable and of good report? If there's any excellence, if there's anything or anyone worthy of praise, think about it. Continually, it says, center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. That is how you handle the truth. <laughs> That's how you handle it. You think on it. You allow it to, to, you meditate on it and allow it to become a part of you. So, there are consequences. There are, there are, 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 Freedoms that come from that. Freedom from death and all its friends. We just talked about that. Freedom from doubt, uh, anxiety, uh, physical disease. It brings great peace. And handling, rightly handling the truth, takes us to beyond ourselves. We become a part of a king, a beloved, a savior who is beyond ourselves, beyond our small little thinking, our small little world, beyond our mind and our emotions and our will, beyond the borders of personality that we say, well, I'm that way because that's just the way I am and that's just my personality. We are who God made us and we have to find the truth of what that is and who that is. It takes us beyond the limits of our carnal understanding, but beyond the problems and the circumstances and the difficulties, truth takes us into a deeper realm in, in, in Him. It takes us into the beauty of who He is. It takes us beyond human compassion and human hope and human love into divine compassion, into divine love, into divine hope. Truth takes us into encounter. It takes us into the ability to have an encounter with the only God, with the only one. He's not a king on some throne surrounded by armies and spears and swords and keeping us from him. He's someone who wants to be close with us. That is the truth of today's world. And so... We find the truth in him. We find the discernment of the truth in him. We find the ability to handle the truth, even if it's a hard truth. It may be something that you didn't want to know. You didn't, you didn't want to. Then the comfort from him gives us the ability to handle that truth. When, when, when the word of the Lord comes, I, the Lord told me something several days ago. and was not something that I, I liked and that I really it was a shock. I, I thought had been thinking a different way. And the Lord spoke something to me. And for two days, it was all I could hear. It was just one phrase. And I just heard it over and over. And I had to go into the Lord and let his truth comfort me in what that truth was saying and then show me the way because God is the way maker, so then he showed me the way to navigate through that truth that he told me about. So in the midst of this great battle for truth, as the kings are warring for power, we must be in Christ, in the truth, praying and prophesying in the storm front, rightly and accurately handling the truth, kingdom truth, personal truth, words of truth in our mouths, and the wisdom of God as the plumb line and the anchor of our souls. I want to close with Psalm 18, verse, starting with verse 28. I won't read all of them, but You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With Your help, I can advance against a troop, and with my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, His way is perfect. The Word, the truth of the Lord is flawless. He's a shield for all who take refuge in him. He the truth. Who is God besides the Lord and who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet 
like the feet of a deer, and he enables me to stand on the heights. This is what truth enables me to do. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me a shield of victory, and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. I pursue my enemies, and you help me overtake them. I don't turn back until they're destroyed. They fall beneath my feet. You arm me with strength for battle, and you make my adversaries bow at my feet. When we accurately handle, when we rightly handle, when we embrace the truth, when we pray the truth, when we prophesy the truth, when we speak the truth, when we become like Jesus, who, be, who is the truth, and He in us is releasing truth, all of these, these things happen. The truth is we are more than conquerors through Him. We are more than conquerors. We are victorious warriors because He in us fights our battles for us. He is a mighty overcoming force of truth in this world and to accurately handle him according to the Bible we embrace him we believe him we trust him we receive him every day every moment every moment we live in him we walk in him by faith and we embrace all that he is it's a wonderful thing it's a joyful thing to handle the truth. It's a joyful thing to be one with the truth. It's a joyful thing to walk hand in hand with the truth. It's a joyful thing to know that the greatest force in the universe loves us and is a part of us and that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. He made us perfect because he doesn't make junk. He makes treasure that are like him. We're made in his image. That's the truth. So I'm going to handle myself like a treasure that he made in his image. I'm going to believe that I am worthy because he is worthy and he made me. That's the truth. So we handle the truth by receiving, believing, trusting, and embracing the truth. So, Lord, we thank you that you are the truth in this battle. You are the truth. You are the warrior who teaches us to fight. And we love you, God, and we joyously embrace all that you are. Thank you for it. Jesus.